Welcome to today's Talking Geopolitics, where we'll be discussing one of the most critical issues facing Moldova, its energy security and ongoing crisis. My name is Bianca Ilie, and I am EU policy researcher at Vocal Europe, and I am thrilled to be joined by a distinguished guest who brings with him a wealth of knowledge and experience in this topic. I would like to introduce Mr. Julian Groza, Executive Director of Institute for European Policies and Reforms in Moldova and former Deputy Foreign Minister of the Republic of Moldova in charge for European integration and international law. Thank you, Mr. Groza, for being with us today. Uh, with Thank you. Uh, with Moldova's energy crisis continuing to pose significant challenges, uh, Mr. Groza will share his insights on the measures being taken to mitigate the situation and the role that the EU can play in assisting Moldova in this regard. So let's get started and explore this topic. Um, I would like to start by pointing out, uh, Mr. Groza, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, there are two dimensions to the energy crisis in Moldova. The international one, the dependence on Russian gas and Transnistrian electricity, which is more or less the same problem, and the domestic one, the social consequences and potential destabilizing effect. Let's start first with the international one. Moldova is not only a collateral victim of the war in Ukraine, but it's also part of Russia's hybrid war against more than just Ukraine. Therefore, I would like to ask you, how can EU help Moldova balance the need to reduce the dependence on Russian gas with the need to address climate change? Well, first of all, uh, EU is already helping uh, Moldova to address uh, the, the uh, negative impact of increased of energy prices uh, globally. Uh, a tendency that we have seen amounting uh, since uh, the war uh, in Ukraine started uh, by Russia. Uh, but let me go a bit uh, before that, um, just to recall that uh, in autumn uh, 2021, uh, when the energy prices starting to ramp up to amount so uh, drastically. Uh, at that moment, Gazprom decided to uh, suspend basically the uh, supply of natural gas to Moldova and uh, demanded uh, for a new contract uh, to be signed. And uh, we have seen attempts by Gazprom, uh, uh, triggered by also the Kremlin, uh, to try to use uh, the uh, energy dependency of Moldova gas, dependency of Moldova uh, uh, to Gazprom, uh, to get uh, uh, a geopolitical deal. I mean, to try to provide discounts uh, from Moldova in exchange of some political or geopolitical conditionalities. At that time, uh, the government of Moldova decided that they would not continue the track that uh, was something common for Russia to agree on long-term contracts using kind of discounts, something which we have seen uh, done also with some uh, other European countries back in, let's look at, I don't know, let's Serbia, for example, Hungary, uh, that uh, in exchange of some decisions or some investment decisions or some political positioning towards Russia got cheaper price. Uh, in 2021, Moldova decided that no, uh, Moldova will go for commercial uh, deal that how it is, um, uh, uh, and as a result of that, following uh, difficult talks and negotiations, uh, Moldova got Moldova Gas got a contract uh, with Gazprom under a new formula, uh, and since then, um, because it was done before the winter time, uh, the dependency on Russia, of course, exposed a lot of vulnerabilities, and then Moldovan government decided to. Uh, uh, speed up a reform process and looking at the energy uh, dependency of Russia fighting uh, and, and looking for alternatives, how to increase uh, our independence, how to increase our resilience. Uh, and um, one year after that, um, uh, things have changed in Moldova. Uh, EU has provided uh, not only help to diminish the increased energy prices on vulnerable uh, 
groups in Moldova on the citizens because the EU has provided direct budget support to compensate prices, increased energy prices uh, back in uh, the winter of 2021. But the EU and the international and European financial institutions have also opened uh, uh, special credit lines uh, to help Moldova to be able uh, to look for uh, uh, alternatives uh, of gas. That happened in 2022, after the war started. I mean, the same tendency was uh, kept in terms of the increased prices. Uh, but Moldova, thanks to the fact that uh, was better connected uh, to the uh, European Union uh, uh, grids, uh, having opportunity to import uh, natural gas from other uh, resources than only from Gazprom. Uh, what happened is thanks to European uh, uh, Bank for Reconstruction Development credits of uh, about 300 uh, uh, million euros, uh, the government managed to buy on the market uh, the gas before the winter of last year and store it in Romania and Ukraine. When Russia realized that, that Moldova is increasing its uh, resilience and the diminishing independence of gas supplies, what, uh, uh, what uh, Gazprom started to do uh, back uh, in autumn last year started to decrease uh, the contracted supply. Uh, in September, October, November, they decreased by 20-30%. Then before the winter time, the supply to Moldova was uh, decreased in half. And uh, But thanks to the fact that Moldova has had alternatives, uh, uh, the government decided that uh, the remaining uh, half uh, of volume that was supplied to be sent only to Transnistrian region um, uh, to continue supply there in exchange to get cheaper prices for electricity uh, because the power plant in Transnistrian region is using the, was using the gas uh, to generate electricity. So basically there was an exchange. Basically, You take the gas uh, that Russia is providing to you, you all anyways do not pay for it and it, this is a subsidy that Russia is, is providing to you. Uh, uh, and Moldova will get a cheaper price uh, for the electricity. That was the deal. But that was happening because Moldova managed in less than one year to increase its independence from Russia. And today, for, for, the, for, for the last three months, Moldova is consuming, with the exception of the Transnistria region, is consuming uh, uh, non-Gazprom gas. The one which was stored in Romania and Ukraine, the one which was bought on the market, and this actually... Uh, shows that EU had an important role to increase Moldova's resilience already and decrease its dependency from Russia. This year being the first year when Moldova is, with exceptional transition region, getting uh, alternative gas. So that's that's the way how the EU is helping, and this is something which continues. Uh, the EU support is now channeled not only to help Moldova to uh, uh, have available cash to buy uh, 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 gas on the market. Uh, also, last year, you has provided additional funding to uh, compensate for the government, to compensate the increased energy prices. And at the same time, EU is very much uh, helping, and not only EU, US as well. Uh, we have heard of uh, last week uh, decisions of the uh, US, uh, USAID, to provide Moldova uh, another $300 million to help Moldova to increase its re energy resilience. So the international partners of Moldova are helping to Moldova to build up alternatives, to invest in energy efficiency, to invest in alternative uh, energy resources. So that's how how how, how things evolved in uh, in less uh, than two years. Uh, just reconfirming that uh, you that Moldova is not alone already, and the EU and other international partners is helping Moldova to increase its resilience and decrease its dependency uh, on gas supplies from Russia. Indeed. Uh, and talking about uh, gas agreements, moving on, on December uh, 3rd, 2022, Minister, then Minister uh, Spunu made an announcement regarding an agreement side with the uh, Kuchurgan power plant in Tiraspol. In exchange for this, Kishino will be providing Tiraspol with all the natural gas that they have bought from Gazprom. Uh, Minister Spunu believed at that time that this agreement is more economically viable than the policy of purchasing most of the electricity from Romania as an emergency measure. Do you think Moldova gave in to pressure uh, from the Kremlin and Tiraspol or made the necessary compromise for that time? No, the first uh, option or the, the second one, um... As, 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 as I tried to explain in my previous uh, um, reply, um, Moldova was uh, uh, looking for options 
to ensure its energy, not only energy independence, but also energy security uh, in these times before the winter time. And uh, thanks to the fact that Bolivar held alternatives, th th thanks to the fact that Moldova managed to, to have available volumes of gas, uh, that provided uh, alternatives also Moldova to address uh, the electricity supply. But before uh, December uh, last year, what Moldova was uh, able to do, Moldova indeed, when Russia started to uh, attack uh, the Ukrainian critical infrastructure, civilians, energy infrastructure, the Ukraine has suspended its supply of electricity to Moldova because Moldova was buying a third of our consumption uh, from Ukraine. Another part of the consumption was indeed uh, uh, bought from transition region, from Kuchurgan power plant, which is owned also by a Russian company, Indirao OS. Uh, but when the Russia started to decrease the uh, gas supply, uh, this uh, uh, power plant in transition region started to decrease their supply of electricity to Moldova. But thanks to the fact that Moldova back in March last year, together with Ukraine, joined the European grid uh, of electricity, NSOE, that provided Moldova new options to provide to, to ensure the supply of electricity. And that he this is how Moldova managed, with the support of the Romanian government, to secure uh, special uh, uh, prices uh, for about 30% of the uh, of the electricity needed for Moldova. The government of Romania at that time adopted a special decree to help that uh, happening. But also uh, uh, the Romanian uh, Opcom, the, 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 the electricity market, um, provided uh, uh, volumes uh, for uh, importing electricity from Romania. And basically for about uh, one month and a half, Moldova was uh, importing uh, the all amount of electricity, about uh, 75 to 80% of the needs uh, from Romania, thanks to the fact that we were connected to uh, the, the European grid. Uh, we have challenges. The constraint we have is that we have too little connections, so high voltage uh, connections so with Romania. This is something which is currently being addressed, but that would happen. I mean, we will have a new grid uh, only in two years' time. Uh, a new project is currently being uh, uh, prepared uh, to develop a new uh, uh, grid uh, connecting uh, uh, Moldova with Romania uh, in the north part of Moldova. But even with existing uh, connections, Thanks to the NSOE uh, capacity, Moldova managed for a month and a half to 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 uh, ensure the needed supply of electricity for consumption before the winter time. However, when uh, uh, the Ukrainian critical infrastructure started to be attacked, uh, of course, Ukraine started to have a lot of blackouts. That happened also in Moldova because we, Moldova and Ukraine, was connected in one grid. So all the attacks on Ukraine were felt in Moldova as well. So the government had to look for options in order to ensure when ent entering the winter, uh, we had to make sure that we have a, a supply both of gas, but also electricity. And uh, as mentioned, thanks to the alternative gas supplies for Moldova, then the government decided to go for uh, a deal basically with uh, Kuchurgan, a deal which was present even before that. Uh, the uh, in, 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 in summer uh, as well, in exchange of providing licenses for uh, steel power uh, production, steel, steel, steel power production facility in, uh, in Ukraine. So every month that license was issued and uh, Kuchurgan was uh, signing another contract for one month uh, for supply of electricity. Uh, but in December, basically, there was the, 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 the same option applied. Uh, the difference was that although it was not anymore uh, buying any gas from Gazprom, uh, all the gas uh, that Moldova was receiving was sent to Transnistria region. And in exchange, indeed, we had that deal. So it was not about compromises. It was not about uh, giving up to pressure. Uh, it actually, thanks to the fact that Moldova was more resilient and had options, had the opportunity to uh, get that deal, which now actually uh, helped Moldova to resist uh, during, uh, uh, during the winter time. So we didn't have any cuts in electricity or, or, ga or gas supply. Yes, maybe it's not a very orthodox, basically, way to approach to it, uh, uh, because these contracts of supply of electricity are prolonged every month. But at the same time, there is an interdependency between Transnistria region and Moldova, huge interdependency. Uh, and Moldova wanted to also hide the option to use that interdependency and make sure that uh, to address the number one challenge we had, the security, uh, the energy security of supply and making sure that Moldova is not freezing during the, win the winter time. So that 
how I, how I looked at it. Uh, uh, this is something that it will not be permanent. It's, it's something temporary, definitely. Uh, but for Moldova to get alternatives uh, of uh, electricity, uh, we need to invest in infrastructure. Uh, we need to build up new grids with Romania to connect us. We need to ensure uh, N minus one option for the you know the the EU kind of energy uh, requirements. Uh, and at the same time, we need to build our own power generation capacity because our power generation capacity outdated. Outdated. So Moldova needs investment in generate in, in power generation capacity. This is something what we're looking at as a country also and discussing that with our international partners. And uh, last year, when the Moldova support platform was launched by Romania, Germany, and France. Uh, uh, the energy uh, security, the energy resilience of Moldova was one of the topics. So now the government, uh, international partners uh, are looking at investment in power generation capacity, in investing in energy efficiency and in investing in, uh, in energy renewables. I see. Uh, thank you for your very uh, compiling um, answer. Um, moving on to the social dimension of the crisis, on February 7th, Ukrainian President Zelensky declared that Russia has a plan to change power in the Republic of Moldova. A week later, President Maya Sandu warned in a press briefing about Russia's plans to destabilize the Republic of Moldova. And on the 10th of February, Gavrilita announced her resignation along with her government. In the same month, there were also incidents on the outskirts of Chisinau, as well as the protests by the party founded by uh, millionaire Ilan Shore. Uh, and recently, the air airline Wizair announced the suspension of its flight to and from Chisinau from uh, half uh, uh, March, um, indefinitely due to the high risk in the country's airspace. What is your take on the rising tensions in Moldova? and how these tensions affect the population, the citizens, and how can EU react to it to help the new pro-European government stay in place? Well, there are a number of uh, layers uh, in your uh, question. Uh, I'll try to address all of them as, as I can. But first of all, um, Moldova is indeed one of the most affected countries after Ukraine uh, due to Russian's aggression. Uh, Russian war in Ukraine. Uh, Moldova is not uh, um, currently being on an imminent military attack from Russia or conventional uh, aggression from Russia. Uh, of course, there are the risks which uh, which uh, have amounted since the war started, and I mean here the legal presence of Russian troops in Transnistria region, which are a destabilizing factor uh, or risking uh, factor. Uh, but Moldova has been very much a target of hybrid aggression for Russia. Uh, and energy was one of the tools that Russia has used and wo weaponized, basically, uh, to put pressure on the country, to put pressure on the government, to put pressure on the citizens of Moldova and of Transnistrian region, by the way, and you know, those living in Transnistrian region as well. Uh, but uh, uh, among these, there are other tools that uh, we have seen Russia using, uh, of course, the disinformation and propaganda. Uh, uh, we have still challenges to ensure our information security uh, of this, I mean, the, 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 the information space security. Uh, <clears throat> due to the fact that for, the, for, for too many years, uh, the, this topic was not properly addressed by governments in Moldova. But of course, with the war, um, uh, this has been, um, as it was a target, uh, uh, government, Moldovan authority, civil society was doing a lot of to 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 fight disinformation online by debunking, by exposing this disinformation. Um, uh, recently, in uh, uh, December last year, the special emergency committee of the government decided to suspend the broadcasting of six uh, TV companies, which uh, were local but were affiliated to Shore uh, Party and uh, uh, Mr. Shore who were rebroadcasting basically the Russian content and were used for uh, for the disinformation. Uh, the online space is again uh, uh, something which is uh, very much used now as the traditional basically media used for the disinformation has a uh, few options uh, to broadcast. Uh, uh, and that is remaining a challenge. And here I'd like to mention that 
um, Mr. Shore and the Shore Party have been designated by U.S. Treasury. I mean, they put on the on the sanction list. Uh, so it's not only Mr. Shore, but also the Shore Party have been have, has been sanctioned by U.S. in autumn last year. Uh, it was uh, for alleged connection uh, co connections with Russia uh, uh, for Mendeling uh, in internal affairs of Moldova to attempt to destabilize. That was the reasoning why U.S. has put them on the uh, the part on the sanction. And uh, Mr. Shore, not only because of the fact that Mr. Shore has been has a, has been a kleptocrat who have been having their own interest to try to, I mean, they have been he was indicted and he's currently being investigated for the billion dollar fraud and so on and so forth. But at the same time, uh, um, uh, uh, also in autumn, we have seen an, an rising uh, movements of uh, protests. Then we realized here, and independent uh, journalists have actually exposed that. Uh, that uh, those protests were sham protests because they were financed illegally by the Shore Party. Uh, then uh, the authorities went into investigation that, and they indeed uh, identified proofs to show that uh, the protests were illegally financed uh, from fund funds from abroad. Uh, there are currently investigations into the party, uh, into the party members who have been involved in this type of activities. Uh, the Shore Party is being currently. Uh, uh, considered by the Constitutional Court of Moldova to uh, be closed. Uh, we are looking for the final de decision of the Constitutional Court, but uh, after all these uh, indications and uh, violations uh, that have been exposed, not only by Moldovan authorities, but also by the U.S. Uh, authorities, uh, may indicate that uh, that there is a high possibility that uh, the Shore Party will be suspended. Uh, last year, the Shore Party has been indeed involved in this type of activities, uh, trying to use the vulnerabilities of the crises that Moldova has been hit. Uh, I mean, the people, of course, have been suffering, uh, and basically the plan was very simple uh, to use this uh, negative energy of the people and the I mean, the, the fact that people are affected by the increased energy prices, increased I mean, high inflation, increased prices, and try to channel that energy uh, against the constitutional law, against the government, and so on and so forth. Last year, the authorities have been um, vigilant enough and uh, prevented any potential escalation, any potential provocations. Uh, and this has been uh, reactivated uh, since the beginning of this year. The Shore Party now transforming uh, it into kind of a new political popular movement, uh, collecting signature from signatures from citizens uh, to make the government to pay the bills for the citizens. Purely a populistic move, definitely. But they try to use it uh, again to to gather new kind of uh, uh, wave for 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 new protests, and we have seen for the last few weeks a uh, uh, few attempts uh, to I mean few kind of new new protests organized by the same uh, type of people by the same way uh, and so on and so forth, uh, which definitely coincided again with the mounting threats coming from from, from Russia. Even if last year, I mean, there were no kind of indications officially from Russian officials or threats coming, it's it was usually done by propaganda, by proxies, and uh, and by uh, by by these type of actors. But since the beginning of the year, we already heard Mr. Lavrov, the foreign minister of Russian Federation, twice threatening Moldova to replicate the Ukrainian scenario. And recently, we have seen from uh, statements from uh, the Defense Minister of Russian Federation, from Foreign Minister of Russian Federation, uh, spreading uh, uh, information, disinformation, actually pro provocative information about an alleged attack on transistor region that is planned by Ukraine. Uh, and all that, of course, we have seen, you mentioned about the uh, statements made of President Zelensky about exposing this alleged plot of coup d'etat in Moldova. This was not a surprise for Moldova, and of course, Moldovan president and authorities have reacted to that as well, uh, sending very clear signal that Moldovan authorities are looking into that and trying to prevent any of that happening. Um, uh, but at the same time, we have seen a number of things which which are, um, or a uh, number of factors, a number of, of indications which show uh, kind of an attempt of Russia again to have reactivate uh, these vulnerabilities and try to channel again to use the the, the proxies, their proxies here to use the protests uh, to uh, to I mean to to bring people from outside uh, to be engaged into some illegal activities uh, directed against the public institution, against the constitutional order, and so on and so forth. Uh, what I 
can say at this stage, and what, what, what I see at this moment is that the authorities are vigilant enough um, uh, to uh, avoid any provocation. Um, that is also relevant, by the way, for the interaction that Moldova government has with, with Tiraspol, with the, the, those interstitial region. Uh, there is already, since the war started, actually, there was this one-to-one -one dialogue between Kishno and Tiraspol with the main purpose to maintain peace and stability and exchanging and dialogue and and uh, and uh, uh, building on on these interdependencies as much as we can to keep, you know, uh, 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 peace and stability and avoiding any de-escalation, any escalations. And last year we had signals like in uh, March last year, there were provocations like bombings of buildings and so on and so forth. Mm, which was basically uh, addressed. Uh, now there is a new wave of that again, and uh, one would have to look at these uh, uh, indications coming from Russia that uh, there is an alleged attack from Transnistria, uh, from Ukraine on Transnistria region, uh, rather as a, uh, uh, as as an attempt of Russia to try to disperse Ukrainian army attention from the active war zone in the eastern part of Ukraine, Lobas, where the main fights are taking place around Bakhmut area. And trying to push to to make sure that Ukrainians, Ukrainian army, are keeping pre, uh, you know their pre military presence in the, in the western part because of uh, alleged uh, you know security risks coming from the military, from the army of Russia, which is uh, which is still staying in Transnistria region and so on and so forth. But of course, the second objective is linked very much to increase the anxiety among Moldovan population, among the those living in Transnistria region, to try to you know to incite, to try to 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 attempt to destabilize the internal situation. All that put together, you also have this uh, announcement of this air, uh, which was uh, a surprise because there, there, are not, there are no other companies, flight companies that are uh, have, have stopped uh, or planning to stop any flights from Kishino. Uh, um, this air was the only one to announce. Actually, there, there is one more that uh, over the last few weeks, this the Air Moldova company, which is owned uh, still by uh, proxies linked to shore, uh, they also started to, to stop uh, uh, flights uh, from Kishino, uh, and there are some disruptions there as well. Well, with Vizair, to me, it's very simple. It's, uh, I mean, Vizair already last year were signaling that they are moving uh, their operations from Kishino to Vyash. Uh, uh, so to me, it's a purely financial uh, aspect, uh, probably, uh, uh, than, uh, than the security argument that they have used uh, to show, I mean, to say that they are planning to to stop flights from Kishinev. And I would not exclude also geopolitical or political component of it, uh, given the fact that uh, what connection has this air with, uh, with, uh, 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 with people in Hungary. Uh, and uh, we know how Hungary is looking at, uh, at uh, internal debates about you know the, 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 the war in Ukraine and Russian war and so on and so forth. I don't want to speculate, but that uh, that element is is also being you know discussed here among media and 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 people. Uh, uh, maybe it's not the case, but uh, yeah, definitely it's not about security uh, of uh, the flight company. Uh, at least is a very very much financial aspect uh, that uh, they believe uh, they wanted to use. But putting all that together, yes, you may see these developments happening. Um, uh, the most important thing is that we are aware as a country that we are on the hybrid aggression of Russia. We see the mounting risks and uh, threats coming from Russia. But at the same time, uh, Moldova is not alone uh, in this uh, situation. Uh, Moldova has increased its uh, its uh, cooperation, including uh, security and defense with the EU and uh, NATO member countries. Uh, Moldova is planning uh, now with the EU to start a special uh, civilian mission, EU civilian mission, CFSP mission, CFSP mission in Moldova. This is currently being discussed in Brussels. Uh, EU has doubled our defense budget over the last year, uh, thanks to the European Peace Facility. Uh, NATO has prioritized uh, increasing resilience in defense and security of Moldova uh, as well. Uh, so yeah, Moldova is not alone and uh, of course, the main risk that we need all to address here in Moldova is uh, to make sure that we are able to fight propaganda, disinformation, uh, and make sure that uh, uh, the authorities uh, are vigilant enough to avoid any provocations and uh, making sure that there is a de-escalation. Uh, and at the same time, the perpetrators, those who are trying to do that, uh, are closely investigated and, uh, and, and stopped uh, from these type of legal activities.
Indeed, you're right. Um, moving on, uh, in the past years, there has been a debate about what the Western strategy should be for the countries surrounding the Black Sea, specifically the Western Black Sea, and how to integrate these countries more and boost the cooperation in the region. In 2015, the Three Seas Initiative was created to promote cooperation for the development of infrastructure in the energy transport and digital infrastructure in the region. How can the actions of the Three Seas Initiative can integrate and be beneficial to Moldova on long term? Well, Moldova and Ukraine have already asked uh, uh, for being in, involved in, uh, in three seas initiatives projects. Uh, there is also the B9 format, which which also provides that uh, or more or less building on, on the same objectives. Um, over the last year, as mentioned, uh, uh, Moldova was uh, uh, signaling uh, to our international partners that we need more support to increase our resilience. And this is exactly what the EU, US, international partners, member states in the EU are trying to do. Romania has played a crucial role as well, uh, together with other countries. And I gave you the example of the Moldova support platform of uh, France, Germany, and and, uh, and Romania, which was started in uh, last year that continues uh, the work. Uh, uh, it was another uh, conference in Paris. The next one will be in Kishino, uh this year. Uh, but definitely, three C's initiatives is is is, is an avenue uh, that can be and should be exploited to to better connect uh, our countries to the European Union. Of course, we talk about infrastructure projects. We talk about uh, roads. We talk about uh, energy grids. We talk about uh, uh, um, railway uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, definitely, uh, it's much more feasible and more sustainable to develop uh, our infrastructure and connectivity uh, and connecting Moldova and Ukraine towards uh, with the European Union with this regional form as re- regional uh, uh, context because it uh, it provides new opportunities. And this is something that we're looking at, of course, as a country. Last year, Moldova, together with Ukraine, actually joined the uh, 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 transport community uh, treaty, uh, which again, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's providing its own uh, opportunities. Uh, when looking at the energy, for example, Moldova is, uh, has been invited to uh, to on the joint procurement uh, platform of the EU to buy uh, energy uh, uh, in the EU, and so on and so forth. So, definitely, there are a number of initiatives uh, uh, which which should be exploited. Three, three, three C's initiatives is one of them, but more importantly, is of course the role of the countries of uh, this uh, formats uh, that. Uh, and their attention that and their support that they de- de- dedicate to us. And uh, we talk about now, of course, about the reconstruction of Ukraine, not only about to how you Ukraine can be helped to to to, to resist and fight back uh, the aggression of Russia, but also there are already talks about reconstruction of Ukraine. And of course, uh, when looking at the first, uh, uh, reconstruction projects, although uh, should be and will be a uh, part of those projects, and we have to look at uh, at the next at the next. Uh, uh, developments and trying to 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 make sure that we look also in the future and and development and this year uh, in June we have the the next uh, European Political Community Summit in Chisinau and uh, these topics definitely can be and should be on the agenda of this uh, event uh, in that format and look for opportunities how to uh, you know help Ukraine how to help uh, the region to increase its resilience and uh, focus on development in the future. Well, on that positive note, we will have to end this interview. Thank you very much again for being our guest today. Thank you for sharing your insights on this relevant and important topic. Um, As a reminder, this interview will be published on all of Vocal Europe social media platforms and on our website as well. Thank you again, Mr. Groza, and have a great day. Thank you.